stringent rules, what I would say are draconian rules that come along with that. So I would have to comport to specific bylaws concerning how long I've been on hormone therapy. But typically after 12 months, if you've been on hormone therapy, you can compete as a woman if you identify as one um, and you tra are transitioning. So I would enter some powerlifting competitions. Um, um, yeah, I'm just living my authentic truth. Um, and Come on, is Josh! Show me too! Quit playing with me! I'm the pimp on a blam, Josh! I can do this bit, I can do this dance with you, we can joke around, and I'll, you know, I'll be nice, and I'll say all the transgender shit, but you know it's a work! This is a gimmick! This is like professional wrestling! Sorry, I'm not trying to yell at a beautiful lady like you, but... What are we gonna do, Josh? What are we gonna do, dude? How long are you gonna freaking... I mean, do you have women's underwear on right now? Well, I would never answer that. Well, that. Shalom, shalom. This video is a follow up to a previous one. Um, and also, that's why I inserted all those clips before the um, intro song, just so you get a recap of what the situation is. Josh Sider is somebody who has recently gained a lot of fame online for being open about her transition journey. But a lot of people are asking, well, where's the transition? This honestly just comes off as trolling. And so there's a big debate over, is Josh Sider transgender or not? Um, or is Josh Sider just rage baiting? and I will be using her pronouns. So if you want the recent uh, drama she's been through leading up to her coming out as trans, you can watch the previous video. But it turns out her drama goes much further back than I initially thought. And first I wanna be clear, I, the big question is, why does it really matter if Josh Sider is transgender? I mean, it doesn't really matter if someone is transgender or not, what pronouns they use, how they present in public, is that really a big deal? Well, the answer is yes and no. It's not a big deal if somebody is transgender or not, but it is a big deal if somebody is using transness as a means to be famous online, to get attention, to have possibly new career opportunities without being authentic about it. Josh Sider, for a while, was presenting herself as a mental health advocate and now being transgender, has definitely used transness as a means to gain a new platform. So with almost a million followers on Instagram, with reels constantly going viral, and yet the chance that she's, well, lying, then no, it's not okay. I'll give you another example. Rachel Dolezal, the lady who was pretending to be Black for a very long time until she got busted. When this news took the country by storm, there was a lot of debate on race. Does it really matter or not? And a lot of people, including Rihanna, Wendy Williams, and Whoopi Goldberg said, hey, look, I mean, she did a lot of good for the community. And, you know, it could be considered a compliment if she wants to identify as a person of color. And the issue with what Rachel did was she led people to believe she was part of the community and assimilated herself into it by being an educator, an activist, and all that. All those things she could have done while being openly white. She can still have been a good ally, an educator on the history of American slavery and racial oppression, all while being white. It's important that more people, no matter what background, get involved in civil rights causes. But Rachel was using Blackness as a means to escape her past. She had a very traumatic childhood, which she talked about. She has adopted Black siblings, and she definitely saw another race as a means of obtaining peacefulness in her life, of finding some fulfillment. And look, it is nice that she really cares so much about oppression and racism, but I'm sorry, Rachel, another person's race is not your personal therapy. And it cheapens the cause when that was the real reason the entire time. And also, trigger warning for racism and white supremacy, not related to the Rachel case I just gave, but Josh Sider herself. Because when the news broke that Josh Sider was coming out as trans, as I said, there were a lot of doubts. One of those doubts were raised 
by a very interesting person who was very close to Josh Sider. As you imagine, uh, because Josh Sider was famous for being on The Bachelorette and dating other reality stars, and just having a pretty big following on Instagram altogether because of thirst traps, a lot of news outlets covering, you know, social media stars and, you know, D-list celebrities were picking up on the story. You can see here by this page called Covered Geekly, there's a post covering Josh Sider's reaction to the public calling her out for not being trans and not, or just not liking the fact she's identifying as transgender. Notice this comment here that came up in sometime in late July. This post went up on July 21st. This is from the Facebook page of influencer Brian Hahn, and he wrote, Josh is trolling. He used to spend the night at my house, make fun of liberal insanity all the time. No one can tell the difference between what's real and what's a joke anymore in society, thanks to Democrats. So Brian Hahn is saying that Josh Sider is definitely trolling, that this is all just an act, and that Brian himself knows he's just making fun of, I guess, the left wing and their acceptance of the trans community. I have to deviate here because Brian Hahn is a very interesting person in himself. So Brian Hahn has been on the internet for a very long time. He got famous on YouTube well over 10 years ago for doing musical parodies, pretty much showing off his body. He has over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube as of now. It actually used to be more, but he's not really active on YouTube anymore. His Instagram has been deleted, but when it was active, he had a million followers. I will say, though, a lot of those followers were bought. I, I wish I had screenshots of this. I don't. In, I think, 2019, he hit 1 million, and then suddenly his Instagram follower count dropped to 960,000, which tells me that a lot of those followers were just robots he bought. And when he hit the million, it triggered the Instagram AI to do an audit on his account and delete a lot of uh, fake followers. Eventually, the account just went deleted. Brian Hahn has been in the news quite a few different times. So he, again, he has a very extensive history in fame in the public eye. But uh, just for the sake of relevance, I'm just going to keep it to Josh Sider and the political social space this controversy is operating in. In June 2020, Brian Hahn got into a lot of trouble for extremely racist tweets. In reaction to the George Floyd shooting, Brian Hahn made a lot of disparaging remarks against Black people. Uh, there was a campaign for OnlyFans to remove his account because well, that was his income at the time. I think it still is, though I don't think he sells specifically on OnlyFans. Now, there is a Queer Tea article, Queer Tea's like a gay news site covering it. And what's interesting is Brian Hahn actually responded to the article in the comments of Queer Tea. Or if not, it's somebody with I guess his username, although I do think this is him, in which Brian Hahn claims that it's wrong to be accused of racism. He does stand with Black people and Black Lives Matter. I've already spoken with OnlyFans regarding this issue. My message is very clear on every platform. Hashtag say no to violence. Hashtag say yes to peace. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Please note I have one Twitter account, Brian Hahn Real. All other accounts are not run by me. Feel free to report them for impersonation or fraud. Screenshots can be manipulated very easily in Photoshop, so go on to my account. Brian Hahn Real for my official tweets. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Those are my brothers and sisters dying on the streets. These riots are hurting African Americans the most. Dozens dead, hundreds arrested, and Black neighborhoods destroyed. I understand the problem. I do not support the solution. Violence only knows the law of multiplication. You can murder the hater, but you cannot murder the hate. Only love can do that. In order to address Black Lives Matter correctly, it is important to look at the full price according to the FBI statistics. Most Blacks are dying in their own neighborhoods, stating, this does not make me racist. It means I care. We have to do more as a society system to make Black neighborhoods safer. Nobody deserves to feel unsafe in their own homes. I think we should be consistent with our message. Black Lives Matter all the time, not just when the killer is white. There was security guard at the dollar store and a Waffle House chef shot for asking someone to wear a mask. Why are we not protesting them? They were actually trying to save lives, but we hear crickets. Why? Because these situations we weaponize to create race wars instead of dealing with the actual issue. I can stand for African American rights and speak out against violence at the same time. It is my fundamental right as an American to vote for who I think will keep our country safe and prosperous. For you to bully me because of my political views is unacceptable. I will continue to be consistent with my message, which is Black Lives Matter, hashtag say no to violence. I also have posted to my OnlyFans showing my support for African American rights as well as speaking out against violence. You can insult me, bully me, harass me, pit the whole world against me, but unarmed truth and unconditional love, I will have the final word. So there you have it. Um, Brian Hahn denies having tweeted those things and gave his actual political statement. 
which isn't that much different than the tweets that he claimed were not his, although the one major stark difference is um, he is not anti-Black Lives Matter. So again, make that what you will. Well, whatever standing with Black Lives Matter he claimed to have didn't last because he would then very soon to make very nasty tweets about Black Lives Matter. We all know the difference between jogging and hauling ass. You can tell if someone's exercising or if someone is running from something. A jogger doesn't violently attack when confronted either, just like the footage shows. So Brian Hahn, soon after, just fully dove into uh, the red pill. And we have a ton more controversies that I won't get into. But the key thing to note here is Brian Hahn claimed to have known Josh Sider personally. And I was like, wait, really? Because on the surface, there isn't a whole lot of evidence that they were together a thing. Though Brian Hahn is a digital sex worker on OnlyFans or whatever else, and Josh Sider was a former sex worker. Josh Sider's escort and sex work past is a little hard to trace because she went under a lot of different names, like Dean Andrews and, well, a bunch that are hard to track. And all these other names had social medias that are taken down and weren't really popular enough to get hits in the Wayback Machine. But on various forums, there are a lot of posts discussing those social media and what was on them. So a lot of third party accounts. Like here's a post on a discussion forum saying that Josh Sider was also posting a lot of conspiracy theories around 2020. But it does seem that Brian Hahn and Josh Sider did collaborate on some OnlyFans sex work video platform, I'm not sure which, at some point. And at one point, Josh Sider had similar views to Brian Hahn. What happened is on either OnlyFans or some similar platform, both of them made a video together called Dear Black People. It's a platform, apparently, for selling sexy videos, but this wasn't a sexy video, just like a pay-per-view that got a lot of backlash, obviously. And this was in September 2020. Here's a screenshot of that video. I don't have the actual video, but it did definitely exist. And Josh Sider was going by Joshua Andrew and definitely was friends with Brian Hahn. Interesting that Josh Sider later on would go on to have a relationship with two women of color, one of them being trans. Just overall, for quite some time, at dur for the duration of Josh's friendship with Brian, Josh's Twitter was filled with so many racist rants, uh, pretty much against every possible minority, I guess, except queer people. I don't think Josh Sider and Brian Hahn are friends anymore, but they were as of 2020, and I don't know exactly when they became friends. But it's interesting that for quite a while, Josh Sider was openly Josh Sider and famous since 2015. Then Josh Sider was able to build this Joshua Andrew profile of being a sex worker and a former lawyer, just like the Josh Sider uh, background profile, completely separate without anyone realizing the two were the same person. But Brian Hahn, not super publicly, just more in comment sections of places no one can find, has been calling out Josh and trying to say, this is all a scam and you're all falling for it. You're all people are insane in a very condescending way. Three weeks ago, he commented on this Daily Mail profile covering Josh. Joshua Andrew used to spend the night at my house. The fact that you are actually taking him seriously is proof the legitimacy of the Daily Mail is a joke. He's trolling you and you ate it up. Yes, a lot of people do think this is trolling, but okay, Josh Sider has the majority of her reels are of her in public looking, you know, more femme presenting with makeup and female centered clothing. So even if this is trolling, it's very clear Josh Sider is very comfortable presenting as gender fluid in public, which I mean, I think people who troll don't typically push it to the extent Josh has been. So maybe it is trolling, but she's definitely I think has some gender fluidity going on. No one would commit this much even for a prank. Tell me what you think is going on, and it is not okay to misgender if you she pronouns in the comment section. Just because someone's doing a bad thing doesn't mean that they need to be misgendered like people are doing with Ava Chris Tyson. So this is a very strange case. I mean, we've seen many people race baiting, blackfishing, pretending to be something completely different 
for the sake of building up a following and all and going to great lengths for it. But when somebody does this level of commitment to it, even if it comes off as very trollish and rage baity. So as much as I hate to say this, look, it really doesn't matter how or where someone falls on the gender spectrum. I do have to lean to thinking that Brian Hahn is correct, even though I don't agree with Brian Hahn on anything about his positions. And that this there's a strong chance that Josh Sider is just trolling and using transgenderism as a means to get attention online um, because Josh Sider is very disingenuous and cannot keep her story straight because when Amber Rose announced her endorsement of Donald Trump on her Instagram, Josh Sider replied in the comment section with uh, a clapping applauding emoji. So happy Amber Rose endorsed Trump. Then later on posted a reel saying why she doesn't endorse Trump. Hey everyone. So I've been getting so many messages from people asking me why I won't even consider voting for Donald Trump. Um, there's a number of reasons why I won't vote for Trump, um, but I just wanted to give you a few. Uh, the main reason is because Trump doesn't even believe in basic facts in science. Um, Trump doesn't recognize me as a woman. Um, Trump also believes that I should be using a men's locker room. Um, and he also believes that there isn't a place in women's sports for a trans woman like me. Um, so I just can't vote for somebody that holds those kinds of beliefs. Um, and another big reason why I would never vote for Trump is he is against millions of people coming into our country illegally, but that are suffering and seeking refuge. Um, and I just can't get behind somebody that's that uncompassionate. So, I mean, definitely this Josh Sider that we're seeing is a very carefully constructed persona. And that's dangerous because it's saying that transgenderism is a persona. It's not it to most people out there. And that's really, 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 hey, look, it's dangerous, it's disrespectful, and even if in the sense of trying to just have a gimmick to get famous online, this should be off limits. But anyway, I will say, though, one thing I do get the sense is Josh Sider doesn't really know how to have relations with people. Josh Sider is someone who can't have close relationships with people. In my last video on her, I covered extensively, you know, um, her drama with relationships and courting controversy. And I noticed people like this generally supplement close relationships with rage baiting people because they can't have compassionate attachments, but to substitute for some kind of personal connection, they just thrive off getting people to display their rawest, most intense emotions, almost as a form of like substitute intimacy in a way. And actually it's really sad. This is actually getting much more normalized in our society. More people are have to truly think that just making people angry online, that being something to be angry at about is as an actual legit way of having a relationship, not even just parasocial, just relationships in general. And I think that's just really, really, really sad. I mean, even there's people who are just fine with either having a relationship with an AI machine or just talking back and forth on apps or email or whatever else for months or years and saying they're in a legit, happy, committed relationship. But anyway, let me know what you think. Do you think something more serious could be going on beneath the surface?